So I realize we're in the middle of days of summer, currently in Call of Duty World of War 2, and in no way do I want to detract from the event at hand because it's a lot of fun, we have some cool things on offer, we have Leprechaun Hunt, we have Sandbox 24-7 on PlayStation 4, we have new weapons, new collections, all kinds of stuff going on still for the next couple of weeks until August 28th when days of summer ends up. So in no way do I mean to detract from the event currently going on, but I want to talk to you guys today about the future of events in World War 2 because while I was streaming Black Ops 4 yesterday to close out the beta, I had a large number of the same singular question. Will there be continued support for Call of Duty World War 2 after Black Ops 4 launches, and if not, how many events do we have left to look forward to within Call of Duty World War 2? Because as of what events offer in World War 2 is more content, new things in terms of some maps every so often, new playlists and fun game modes like that, and so in that sense, if you're looking to keep playing World War 2, will you have a future to look forward to in terms of extra support, or if not, how much do you still have left to look forward to? So, it's a fantastic question, which is why I want to take a look at it today and discuss the exact idea here up on the channel because it's a loaded question on multiple angles and something that may have an easy answer but also a more complicated answer as well. So that said, let's dive right into it. So Days of Summer ends on August 28th, so we have at least until then to have a little bit of a secure net of content coming out and of course new things to explore around with if you haven't done so already within World War II. But the next thing up on the deck is probably DLC 4. We're getting towards that point where it's the end of the content life cycle for the primary year of Call of Duty World War 2 and we still have DLC 4 to look forward to. So my guess is that we're probably going to have one in conjunction with that with DLC 4. But as for the DLC dates and when you can actually look forward to this, let's play this out logically. I genuinely don't believe the Call of Duty nor Sledgehammer would want to release a DLC map pack after the launch of Black Ops 4. That's something that a lot of people are saying is that because of the expedited time frame for when we see the release of Black Ops 4, that the traditional marketing period will still be followed and therefore DLC 4 would launch on Xbox One and PC after the launch of Black Ops 4. I don't think that would happen at all. So following the normal two week rule that we have set apart from events that happen within the Call of Duty marketing period, I'd say the latest DLC 4 would launch on Xbox One and PC is September 27th, because that's when DLC for those platforms drop on Thursdays, that's 30 days later than when things normally drop on Tuesdays for PlayStation 4. So just that little flip-flop. So at the latest, I would expect the DLC to drop at the end of September, so with that in mind, we can theoretically walk back in time a little bit and try and predict when we'll see it on PlayStation 4, which 30 days earlier would bring us to the 28th of August, which is just a few weeks away from now. And if that date sounds familiar, well, that's actually because it should Good. That's when Days of Summer ends. So if we're going off what will require a game update, that's a pretty sound guess to me on when DLC 4 may release because if you're going to go offline, it's perfect timing to put out a title update for an event ending as well as throwing in an update required for an entirely new expansion. It just seems to match up in which you don't really have to go through and do many multiple updates. You can just do it all at once. So maybe we see it then, but we also have to bear in mind that's probably the latest case scenario. It's possible that it happens even earlier, though we are getting closer now to when we'd start seeing some marketing material for DLC 4, so it might not be, and we might have hit the nail on the head. Who knows? But assuming that that logic is correct, we'd see Days of Summer end as it's scheduled on the 28th, then we'd start to see the waiting game, because we've previously seen the intervals of three weeks and two weeks, and the last two events of one week. As of recently, we saw the events of Attack of the Undead and Liberty Strike have one week in between, and then as well as Liberty Strike and Days of Summer only having one week interval in between. So with the shortening time frame, Maybe it's the same interval of time from Days of Summer ending as well as DLC 4 potentially launching and then when we see our next event. And that would bring us, if we're firstly assuming that it starts one week later, to September 4th and that's when we start to get into some things of Black Ops 4 conflicts. So that said, I would maybe guess that the next event starts on September 4th and that's probably our next guaranteed event. We have at least one guaranteed here for the ending of World War 2, so bringing us to our 8th event of the World War 2 cycle and potentially last of the primary year. But that said, let's talk a little bit about the Black Ops 4 dates because this also deals with the upcoming event after Days of Summer. So there's going to be the Blackout beta in September, but September 4th, if we're sticking with that date, would bring us an event early enough that it probably won't conflict with the beta. I'd assume that we end up seeing the Blackout beta about a month from now, kind of in line with the same time frame for the Black Ops 4 multiplayer beta, where the first weekend of September is when we see that beta, potentially the second weekend, and then the second or third, one week following after whenever that first one happens. But regardless, September 4th would be early enough that we end up seeing it happen before the beta itself. So the event would go live 
shortly before the beta and then let everyone have their time with Blackout. While also, if it's not on your platform of choice, you still have something to do in World War II to pass the time potentially. But again, assuming the event goes live before Blackout's beta, that would probably be the last event of the World War II life cycle as we then push very near towards the release of Black Ops 4. So assuming we see the start of September bring us a three to four week event that would bring us right to the end of September, right into the start of October, to which about two weeks after that, we end up seeing that Black Ops 4 will launch on October 12th. To me, with it being so close to the end or even still maybe continuation of this theoretical eighth event within Call of Duty World War II, I don't think we'll see much after this here immediately. But that said, what about the future? Because that's something we have seen previously of different titles continuing on support throughout the upcoming years, even though the next title was already launched. That's something that we can now break into because maybe we do see some more events within Call of Duty World War II, but just not as the primary title. The biggest thing that I will say with certainty is that it depends on the player base. Previously, we've seen a couple of different titles have their support continue throughout the next title, and that was directly due in part because the player base was still there. I can guarantee you there will be people watching this video that don't really have any interest within Black Ops 4, but then also there will be people that can't wait for Black Ops 4. So there's going to be a schism no matter what, but it comes down to how many players will be still playing World War II after that. Now, having talked with a lot of the team at Sledgehammer quite a few times, they are incredibly passionate about this title and definitely passionate about giving players more content to keep them busy, and they love creating stuff for the game. So if people play the game, I can guarantee you that they'd love to support it even more. And even playing a little bit further into the fact of giving more content after the launch, it was Sledgehammer with Advanced Warfare that even started the extracurricular support. Advanced Warfare was the first Call of Duty title we'd seen in the franchise that continued support even after that primary year was over. We saw weapons drop well into Black Ops 3's years of content, and we even saw some double XP events even after that, and I think up until some of Infinite Warfare, if I'm not mistaken. That might be wrong, so don't quote me on that exactly, but still, they were the first ones to continue DLC dropping after their title was theoretically over. And also, a little side note, it was absolutely brilliant adding World War II weapons to Advanced Warfare. That sort of subtle Easter egg, maybe marketing even a hint towards their next title, was definitely something that I know I didn't expect, and maybe you guys didn't either. But that said, if you ask me, there will be definitely support for World War II, even after Black Ops 4 launches, so long as the player base is there. Now, in terms of, say, maybe immediately dropping things, I don't know if I would expect that, but there is one thing that would be rather cool and may actually happen, that sort of being a Halloween and fall event, but outside of the realms of that, I can't really say that I'd expect it. I would definitely expect Sledgehammer to go a little bit dark on stuff for a few months at least while Black Ops 4 has that limelight of the launch. Especially that first month, month and a half to two months, I wouldn't expect really anything to continue on, but maybe say around the Christmas time when deals for the current and past Call of Duty titles start to go out, more people will be picking up the games and potentially even World War II at that point, so I would expect that maybe around then we start to see some different events. And that said, that brings us to a lot of different things we could see for repeats and second chances with even more content. So the bigger things like Winter Siege, Shamrock and Awe, Days of Summer, they may actually be making a return because we've already seen these sort of things as marketable times during the year in which we've already seen repeats. I mean, Shamrock and Awe was in Modern Warfare Remastered, Days of Summer was in Infinite Warfare, Modern Warfare Remastered, and Black Ops 3, and then both of those came back for World War II as their own sort of events, with some carryover as well to other games, but regardless, we will have seen these things have a more sort of staple environment within the Call of Duty community, so why not do it again? And in that sense, if they end up doing so, all you really have to do in the sense of creating stuff from Sledgehammer is unlocking these collections, allowing players to have another second chance to earn the items already in there, and then maybe drop one or two, maybe three more weapons and some new uniforms and camos in there, which in the grand scheme of development doesn't really take away from all that much compared to crafting an entirely different title for the release in the end of 2019. So to sum everything up, I'd say we have at least one more guaranteed event within Call of Duty World War II as the primary title, then afterwards maybe we'll see a few months in terms of an off period, but then some things coming back here and there to allow collections to open up, some new things to be dropped, and other things alike. So in that sense, we don't necessarily have as much time as personally I'd like because I love World War II. Admittedly, I think that I have a lot of fun with this game and I'm gonna miss all the support and content here with it from Sledgehammer. And personally, even though I'm gonna be playing a ton of Black Ops 4 as the primary title within the franchise, I'd still love to come back and kick it on World War II every so often if there's new stuff that drops. So in that sense, I'd expect one big one 
one still to go out with a bang potentially and then some things that afterwards maybe either repeats or some things that really are maybe even brand new but regardless we don't have much time left but it is something that I still wanted to let you guys know about this what to look out for and maybe some things in the near future to look forward to as well so that said hopefully guys enjoyed the video hopefully this answered some question you may have about the events and the future of them within World War II so that said let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below do you hope that Sledgehammer puts out some more support for World War II after Black Ops 4 launches or do you think it should go completely by the wayside and Black Ops 4 become the main title exclusively within the franchise whatever it may be let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below love to get your feedback but that said hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you guys did make sure you drop a like down below if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War 2 Black Ops 4 all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel best class setups tips tricks news information all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel so if any of that interests you make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing and also if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter that's the best place to get connected outside of YouTube practically live on Twitter so if you guys want to strike up a conversation ask me a question whatever it may be that link is down there in the description below also if you guys are looking to follow on another front Instagram is down there as well for you guys to follow get a little more active over there also that said hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day thank you all so much for watching Mine is an espresso I'll see you guys later take care and peace